In this video we'll give a brief introduction to matrices. A matrix, or plural matrices, is a rectangular array of numbers in rows and columns. The numbers within a matrix are referred to as elements. The order of a matrix is defined by the number of rows and the number of columns. So the order can be reduced down to the number of rows times the number of columns. It's important to note that you don't actually evaluate that multiplication, you just state it as the number of rows times the number of columns. Generally we use capital letters such as A, B and C to represent a matrix. So we can say that the capital A matrix is equal to the rectangular array and this has one, two rows. So we can say that its order is two times and the number of columns is one, two, three. So that is a 2 by 3 rectangular matrix that we've called A. For two matrices to be equivalent, so for A to equal B, they have to have the same order and all corresponding elements are equal. When referring to a specific element in a matrix, we can use the following notation. So we can use A, I, J, where I is the ith row and J is the jth column. So for an M times n matrix, the aij notation follows this pattern. So as we go across the columns, you can see that the row number stays the same, so row 1, row 1, row 1. However, the column number changes. So we have a row 1, column 1, a row 1, column 2, and it goes up to a row 1, column n. That's because there are n columns in this matrix. If we now go down a column, we can see that this one, this one, and this one stay the same because that's the column number. And we have A, the element in the matrix A in row 1, column 1, row 2, column 1, down to row M, column 1. And that M is because there are M rows in the matrix. There are also certain special types of matrices. So a row matrix, or sometimes called a row vector, contains only one row. So this is an example of a row matrix. A column matrix, or column vector, contains only one column. So here we have one column and three rows, making it a column matrix. Finally, we have square matrices, which contain the same amount of rows and the same amount of columns. So it's an M times M when we consider the order. So here we have a 2 by 2 square matrix. For each of the matrices below, we want to state the order of the matrix, and if applicable, the type of matrix that it is. So for A, we've seen this matrix before. We said that it had 1, 2 rows, so it's 2 times the number of columns, which is 1, 2, 3. So it's a 2 times 3 matrix. And it's just a rectangular matrix. It's not a row or a column vector or a square matrix. So there's no particular type that will name it. And the second thing we want to do is state the position of the element 2 as xij notation. So we can say that for matrix A, it is in row 1, column 2, is the element of 2. For the matrix B, we can see it has 1, 2, 3 rows. So it's 3 times 1, 2, 3 columns. So it's a 3 by 3 matrix, which makes it a square matrix. And the number 2 is located down here. So that is B, and it is in row 3 and column 2. So that there is the element of 2. For matrix C, we have 2 rows. So it is 2 by the number of columns, which is 1, making it a column matrix. And we have the position C, and it is row 2, column 1 where the element 2 exists. For matrix D, we have one row by three columns, which makes it a row matrix. And we have the position D, row 1, column 1, is the element 2. For matrix E, we have one, two rows by one, two columns. So it's a 2 by 2, and we call that a square matrix. And the number 2 is here. And that is in the position E, row 1, column 2, is where the number 2 is located. Finally, for F, 
we have one, two, three rows. So it's three rows by one, two columns. So it's a three by two matrix. Again, it's just a rectangular matrix. It's not a particularly special type. And the number two is in the position down here. And we can say that it is the element F in row three, column one, is where the number two is located. To be able to add two matrices, they must have the same order. So this is very important for the addition of matrices. If the matrices do have the same order, we simply add the corresponding elements together and put the sum in the resultant matrix. So corresponding elements have the same X, I, J location. So they're in the same position in each of the matrices. So in general, our addition would look like this. So we would take A11 and add to it B11 to find the total for the resultant matrix. Next, we would take A12 and add B12 to find the sum for the resultant matrix here. And we would just continue that pattern for whatever shape matrix you have. If addition is defined, we find that A plus B is equal to B plus A for matrices. For this example, we want to evaluate each of the following matrix additions. So for the first one, we have these two matrices, and we can see that they are the same order. So what we do is go along and add each corresponding entry. So this addition will be equal to 4 plus 3 is 7. And then the second element will be 7 plus 9 is 16. And then we'll have 2 plus negative 10 will be negative 8 in that third position. So that's the resultant matrix for that matrix addition. For B, we do the same thing. We check that they have the same size. So their order is two by two. And for the second one, it is also two by two. So now we just add the corresponding entries. So we're going to have minus three plus 78, which will give us 75. Then we have four plus eight gives 12 in that position. And then zero plus negative 46 is negative 46 in that position. And finally, we have 22 plus 3 gives 25 in this position. For part C, we can see that they are the same order again. It is a 3 by 2 matrix for both of them. So addition is defined, and now we just add the corresponding entries. So negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. And then we have 3 plus 6 is 9. 4 plus 3 gives 7. 5 plus 4 gives 9. Negative 11 plus 5 gives negative 6 and seven plus zero is seven. So that is the resultant matrix for that sum. To be able to subtract two matrices, they must have the same order, which is the same criteria as we had for the addition of matrices. So if matrices have the same order, we simply subtract the corresponding elements and put the difference in the resultant matrix. So again, corresponding elements have the same X, I, J location. And in general, for the subtraction, we have A11 would have B11 subtracted from it, and that difference is that first entry in the resultant matrix. Next, you would take A12 and subtract B12, and that difference would go in that position of the resultant matrix. And then that pattern would just be continued for any size matrices that you have. If subtraction is defined, we find that A subtract B is not equal to B subtract A, but there are a few exceptions that do exist. So in this example, we're going to evaluate each of the following matrix subtractions. So for A, we have two matrices and we can check that they have the same order. And now to do that subtraction, we just take each corresponding entry and we go four subtract three, which gives one for the first position. And then we have seven subtract nine, which gives negative two. And then we have two subtract negative 10, which is two plus 10. And that will give 12 for the final position of that matrix. For part B, we can check they have the same order, which they do, which means subtraction is defined. And now we will simply go three subtract negative nine, which is three plus nine is 12 for the first entry. And five subtract two, which is three for the second entry. So for part C, we can see that they're both two by two square matrices, so the subtraction is defined. So what we need to do now is find the difference of each of the corresponding terms. So we have seven subtract five, which is two. Then we have three subtract eight, which is negative five. 
Then we have minus 4 subtract negative 10, which is minus 4 plus 10, so that's positive 6. And then we have 1 subtract 1, which is 0. So that is the resultant matrix for that subtraction. We can also multiply a matrix by scalar. So when we multiply a matrix by scalar, we multiply every entry by that scalar. So when a number is placed at the front of a matrix, it is known as a scalar. So the scalar of a matrix behaves the same way as the number 2 behaves in 2 times A. That is, it multiplies A by 2. For matrices, it scales every entry by that scalar value. So in general, for a scalar K, which is an element of the real numbers, we find that K multiplied by the matrix gives K multiplied by each entry in that matrix. So for this example, we're going to evaluate matrix multiplication by a scalar. So for A, we're going to multiply every entry inside the matrix by 2. So this matrix is going to be 2 times 4 is 8, then we have 2 times 7 is 14, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So that's that matrix. For part B, we're going to multiply every entry by negative 3, which is its scalar. So we're going to have minus 3 times 3 gives negative 9. And then we're going to have minus 3 times 5, which is negative 15. For C, we're going to multiply every entry by 1 half. So we have 1 half multiplied by 8, which gives 4. And we have a half multiplied by 2, which gives 1. A half multiplied by negative 4, which is negative 2. And finally, we have a half multiplied by 1, which is 1 half. So that is the result matrix for that scalar multiplication. So after this video, you should be able to understand that a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. You should be able to determine the order of a matrix and identify row, column, and square matrices. You should be able to understand and describe the location of an element using xij notation. You should know when addition and subtraction is defined and be able to perform these operations. And finally, you should be able to multiply a matrix by a scalar value.